In this lesson, we're going to be finding nth roots, evaluating expressions with rational exponents, and solving real-life problems involving rational exponents. I'm going to scroll down here. You can extend the concept of a square root to other types of roots. For example, 2 is a cube root of 8 because 2 cubed equals 8, and 3 is a fourth root of 81 because 3 to the fourth power equals 81. In general, for an integer n greater than 1, if b to the nth power equals a, then b is an nth root of a. An nth root of a is written as the nth root of a, where the expression the nth root of a is called a radical, and n is the index of the radical. You can also write an nth root of a as a power of a. If you assume the power of a power property applies to rational exponents, then the following is true a to the one-half power squared equals a to the one-half times two is a to the one, and that's a. a to the one-third power cubed is a to the one-third times three, which is a to the one, which is just a. And a to the one-fourth power to the fourth power equals a to the one-fourth times four, which is a to the one again, and that's a also. Because a to the one-half is a number whose square is a, you can rewrite the square root of a equals a to the one-half power. Similarly, the cube root of a is the same thing as a to the one-third power, and the fourth root of a is the same thing as a to the one-fourth power. In general, the nth root of a is equal to a to the one over n power for any integer n greater than one. Real nth roots of a. Let n be an integer greater than one, and let a be a real number. If n is odd, then a has one real nth root the nth root of a equals 1 over n. If n is even and a is greater than 0, a has two real nth roots, plus or minus the nth root of a, or plus or minus a to the 1 nth power. If n is even and a equals 0, then a has one real nth root, the nth root of 0, which is just going to be 0. If n is even and a is less than 0, then a has no real nth roots. The nth roots of a number may be real numbers or imaginary numbers. You will study imaginary numbers in a future course, Algebra 2. For example, one, we're going to be finding the indicated real nth roots of a. Okay, So we want to find the nth root of negative 27 when n equals 3. So this is going to be the cube root of negative 27. Okay? In this case, I want to figure out what number multiplied 3 times is equal to negative 27. Well, that's going to be negative 3, because if you think about it, negative 3 cubed, or negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, is going to equal negative 27. So this is my answer for part A. And then over here, I have the nth root of 16 when n is 4, so that's the fourth root of 16. Another way to write that is 16 to the 1 fourth power. Either way, it's the exact same thing. Okay, So the fourth root of 16, what number multiplied four times is equal to 16? Well, that's going to be 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So the answer here is going to be 2. And now we're done with this one. Evaluating expressions with rational exponents. Recall that the radical, the square root of a, indicates the positive square root of a. Similarly, an nth root of a, the nth root of a, with an even index indicates the positive nth root of a. So in example two, we're going to evaluate each expression. So here I have the cube root of negative eight. So what number multiplied three times is equal to negative eight? That's going to be negative two, because negative two quantity cubed, or negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. So it's going to be negative two. Here I have the negative cube root of eight. So this means I'm going to take the cube root of eight and then apply the negative sign. Well, in this case, I have the cube root of 8, which is just going to be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then I have to apply the negative, so I'm going to get negative 2 again. Okay. Here I have 16 to the 1 fourth power, which is the same thing as the fourth root of 16. And we actually did that one in the last example. The fourth root of 16 is going to be 2, positive 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. So that's my answer here. And then here I have negative 16 in parentheses to the 1 fourth power, this is going to be the same thing as negative 16, and then under this radical, 
with the index of four, so the, the fourth root of negative 16. And if you remember, I can't have a negative number under the radical with an even index here because this is not going to be a real number. There's no number that I can multiply in our real number system um, that will multiply to negative 16. If I try two, I'll do two times two times two times two. That's going to be positive 16. If I try negative two, negative two times negative two is positive four. Positive four times negative two is negative eight. And then negative eight times negative two is going to be positive 16. Okay. So there's no real number that works here. So this is going to be no real solution. And now we're done with this example. Rational exponents. Let a to the 1 over n be the nth root of a, and let m be a positive integer. Algebra. a to the m over n is equal to a to the 1 over n, all to the m power, which is the same thing as the nth root of a, all to the m power. The number example is 27 to the 2 thirds power is the same thing as 27 to the 1 third all to the second power or all squared. And then I can rewrite 27 to the 1 third power as the cube root of 27 and then all squared. Okay. And these are just using exponent properties that we learned in section 6.1. Okay. So for example, three, I'm going to zoom in here. For part A, I have 16 to the 3 fourths power. Okay. So 16, I'm going to rewrite it, to the 3 fourths power. Well, what I want to do is I want to break this fraction up and write it as 1 over something. So it's going to be 1 over 4. Okay, so I'm going to break this up as 16 to the 1 fourth times 3. But if you remember, I can rewrite this uh, product of exponents here as 16 to the 1 fourth power all to the third power. And now I'm going to rewrite 16 to the 1 fourth power as just the fourth root of 16. And then that's going to be to the third power. Okay. Well, I know the fourth root of 16 is going to be 2. We've talked about that multiple times in this video. So this is just going to be 2 cubed. And I know 2 cubed is going to be 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So my answer to 16 to the 3 fourths power is just 8. So now we're done with part A. I'll write that part A here. Now for part B, we have 27 to the 4 thirds power. And I'm going to do the same method here. Okay, I'm going to break this up as 27 to the 1 over a fraction. Okay, So this is going to be 27 to the 1 third. And I'm going to skip this step showing why I can uh, write this as an exponent right here. I'm just going to go right down to this step. Uh, so this is going to be 27 to the 1 third and then all to the fourth power. And then I'm going to rewrite this 27 to the 1 third. Well, that's the cube root of 27. And then all to the fourth power. And I know that the cube root of 27 is going to be 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So it's going to be 3 to the fourth power. Well, 3 to the fourth power is 81. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9. If I do that twice, 9 times 9 is 81. Now I'm done with part B. Now, note, you don't have to break it up like this. What you could do if you wanted, you could do 27 to the fourth power and then take the cube root of that. But you're going to get a really big number here and then have to take the cube root of a really big number. So if you don't have a calculator, uh, the method that I showed at first is much easier. Okay, So I'm going to erase this um, method right there for part B. But anyway, that's how to do these types of questions. And now we're done with this one. The radius r of a sphere is given by the equation r equals quantity 3v over 4 pi all to the 1 third power, where v is the volume of the sphere. Find the radius of the beach ball to the nearest foot. Use 3.14 for pi. Okay, so we want to find the radius here, and we're given the formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my volume in to this equation and then simplify. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as r equals 3 times 113 over 4 times, and then it says to use 3.14 for pi. If it says to use 3.14 for pi, then use 3.14. If it doesn't, then I always would recommend using the pi button on your calculator. Anyway, I'm going to do 3.14. OK, 
Okay, and then this is all to the one third power. But if you remember, that's the same thing as the cube root. So we're, what we're really doing is we're taking this whole thing and and then taking the cube root of it. Okay, um, but what I'm going to do right now is plug this into the calculator. And it doesn't matter if you type in the cube root or if you do the one third power, it's gonna be the same operation. So anyway, I'm gonna go over to the calculator. So I'm gonna write my cube root right now. I just hit this button, nth root. Okay, and once again, you could have put this whole thing in parentheses and taken it to the one third power. It's the exact same thing. Now I'm gonna write three times 13 on the top of my fraction, 113 I should say and then over, and then four times 3.14, because that's what we're gonna use for pi, because that's what it told us to use. Okay, and it calculates this all, okay? So if we see I'm getting a number that's really close to three, and I want my answer to the nearest foot, this is gonna be 2.996. Anyway, if you want a quick reminder on how to round, what you would do is you just go to the number here, this is the nearest whole number, or ne nearest foot, and then go to the digit to the right. This is a nine, so I'm gonna round up. So this is gonna, going to round up to three. So if I go back here, my radius is gonna be about three feet, okay? And this, these squiggly equals things, this uh, means about. So the radius is about, or approximately three feet. And now we're done with example four. For example five, to calculate the annual inflation rate R in decimal form of an item that increases in price from P to F over a period of N years, you can use the equation R equals quantity F over P to the one over N power minus one. Find the annual inflation rate to the nearest 10th of a percent of a house that increases in value from $200,000 to $235,000 over a period of five years. So. If we look up here, okay, I know that P is our initial price value, and then F is our final price value. Okay, And I know that in this example, P is going to be 200,000. So I'm going to write that down because that's our initial value. So P equals 200,000. And F equals $235,000. Okay? And then N is my time period, and that's going to be five years. Okay, so what I want to do is plug these values into my formula, simplify, and then use my calculator to uh, figure out my percentage to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to write my formula here. R equals 235,000 over 200,000 to the 1 over 5 power, okay, minus 1. Okay, so what I can do is I'm just going to simplify this right away. And then I can also rewrite this as the one-fifth power here. Okay, I can actually divide uh, a 5 out of this as well. So it's going to give me 47 over 40. And that's going to be the fifth root of that. All minus 1. Okay, now you could just initially plug all this into a calculator because we're gonna have to use a calculator anyway, but it's never a bad thing to simplify when you can. And anyway, I'm gonna go back to the calculator and now I'm gonna write the fifth root, okay? So fifth root of 47 over 40 and then subtract one. I'm using the arrow keys to get out of my fraction and out of my radical. So now I see that the calculator is spitting out 0 0.0327 blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm gonna write that down on my notebook. So I've written down R equals 0 0.0327, okay? And there's obviously a bunch of more digits, but if you notice, if I scroll back up here, I wanna round this to the nearest 10th of a percent. And to convert a decimal to a percent, all I would do is move the decimal two spaces to the right or multiply by 100. It's the exact same thing. So my percentage for my radius for my inflation rate is going to be R equals 3.27%. Okay, But since I need to round to the nearest tenth, that's why I included this 7 when I was writing this down. Here's the tenth of a percent right here. Okay, And then if I go 1 to the right, I have a 7. So that means I'm going to round this up. So my inflation rate, R... 
to the nearest tenth of a percent is going to be about 3.3 percent. Okay. I'm just going to go back to the calculator to show you another way to write this. So now I just want to show you on the calculator how to write this using the fractional exponent. Okay, and I'm going to use the original numbers as well. So I'm going to do 235,000 over 200,000. And then I'm going to get out of my parentheses here. And then I'm going to do shift 6, or you could have hit A to the B. And then I'm going to write 1 over 5, because that's my exponent here. Then I'm going to use the arrow key to get out of here twice. And then I'm going to do minus 1. And if we notice, we get the exact same value. Okay, so this to the one fifth power and that nth root are the exact same thing. So if you take the nth root and you have n as five, that's the same thing as taking something to the one fifth power. Anyway, if we go back over here, we've already successfully converted our uh, rate into a rounded percent to the nearest tenth. So now we're done with this one.